Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod Science Classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 1st April 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see the today's quote. Today's quote is again a motivation quote. Study so hard that one day your school will invite you as a chief guest. So whatever the hard work you are doing today, so this will be this will be fruitful tomorrow okay so from where you studied from which school you came from so if you are going to clear this upsc and after clearing this upsc whenever you are entering into service so one day your school will invite you as a chief guest for the events in the school okay so think about the future and try to work hard and try to do smart work today so let's get uh, see the first topic it is about india nepal relations so india nepal relations so first we need to know why this india nepal relation is in use so we need to understand what are the issues between india and nepal and we need to know about what are the facets between india and nepal and finally we are going to see so what are the main priorities in this visit of pm of nepal to india okay so these are some important dimensions that you need to know so you need to also focus on map okay so we are going to see map as well so don't worry about that so actually this topic is important from international relations which mainly comes under gs paper 2 and this topic is exclusively important from your mains not from prelims so if you see context mainly says that visit of nepal's prime minister to india so because of this india nepal is in news so here you need to know about which are the states of india sharing boundary with nepal so here we can see uttarakhand uttar pradesh bihar west bengal and sikkim so these are the five indian states which are sharing boundary with nepal okay so you have to make a note and now let us try to see here relationship between india and nepal so what happened there is historically we can see there is low low ties between india and nepal that is seen since september 2015 onwards so we are talking about india nepal relations first we need to understand why the relations are low okay why so we are talking about why we need to understand what are the important issues between india and nepal so the first important issue here is regarding simultaneous floods in bihar and nepal so before that yes we know that india and nepal they are sharing border so india and nepal mainly share open border open border means there will be free movement of people and this is then this open border it is about 1880 kilometers and these two countries india and nepal they mainly finalized maps covering 98 percentage of border but there are some issues especially regarding this lip lake pass and as well as kala pani area and limpia dura so these are the some areas of concern between india and nepal boundary so if you are talking about issues the first one as i said that is simultaneous flood in bihar and nepal so actually you know that here we have himalayas and from this himalayas there are number of perennial rivers they mainly took birth and they mainly comes under this himalayan river system actually some of nepal's biggest river systems they originate in this himalayan glaciers and they will flow into bihar and especially during monsoon season there is a heavy flood which is mainly seen in this some of these rivers okay so it is one of uh, cause of concern and mainly to address this floods between this nepal and bihar we need a proper coordination between this center and as well as government of bihar and even government of nepal right so which are those rivers for example we have gandaki river we have kosi river so these are the two important rivers which mainly floods during monsoon season so what are the measures which are mainly taken so measure here is like joint flood management program so we came up with this joint flood management program 
so as part of long term measures to address this problem of this floods between nepal and bihar we came up with this joint flood management program so under this we came up with this joint project office which mainly established in nepal in 2004 and one important aim of this office it is to prepare a detailed project and this project will report to construct a high dam on nepal side on river kosi river kamla and river bagmati rivers but even though there are many times efforts which is mainly taken by the government of bihar but this dam which is not accomplished even after 17 years so this is about this first issue and second issue it is regarding india nepal border issue as you all know that so there is a mansarovar yatra okay mansarovar yatra so actually this mansarovar yatra which is mainly related to this uh, kailash so what happened so the construction of 80 kilometers long road through this lipu lake pass which mainly got these two himalayan neighbors into fighting arena so because of this uh, road development or infrastructure development through this lipu lake pass to reach uh, to go for this mansarovar yatra so that led to some cause of conflict between this india and nepal regarding this boundary so this road was constructed with a purpose to reduce the traveling distance for this indian pilgrims to reach this kailash mansarovar in tibet okay and nepal says that it is a violation of its border so if you are talking about these three important areas of cause of concern at the boundary here is limpiadura which is located here and we have this kalapani area and this is lipu lake area so this orange color okay orange color area which is a disputed area between india and nepal right and if you are talking about this road so inauguration of this new road to this mansarovar by india which mainly led to straining of relationship between india and nepal so india argues that kalapani it is a part of uttarakhand pitodgarh district but here nepal says that it is part of its darchula district so here to understand this treaty or boundary treaty between india and nepal so we need to go back to 1816 sugali treaty treaty of sugali so this is the treaty which is mainly between nepal and british india so it mainly says that river kali river kali it is it is a boundary okay boundary here but what happened so there is a changing of the course of river so because of this that led to dispute between india and nepal regarding this limpiadura kalapani and as well as lipu lake areas so if you are talking about various facet okay various dimensions of this india nepal relations we need to talk about cultural ties we need to talk about strategical ties and economic ties so if you are talking about cultural ties so we are having our own peculiarities for example india and nepal they share the common culture and as well as common way of life and even across the border of india and nepal so many people they went for marriage in indians marriage in nepal and nepal is marriage indians so in this way we are sharing a common way of life and as well as common culture across this border and actually the religion is one of the important factor and it also plays a predominant role in shaping the culture relations right so here if you are talking about these people who are located at this border they will be going for this chardam yatra and pashupati nath temple and even some buddhist sites as well okay especially in chinese uh, for example if you are talking about in nepal especially we will be having a one religious group or one population sect that is madishis okay they are not in china but in nepal actually so there is a considerable uh, nepalis comprising of this madishi population they will be having familial and as well as ethnical ties with the states of bihar and as well as up so if you consider this as nepal so here in this lower tract at the border of india and nepal so this madishis will be there and this madishis they had some familial ties that means they had some matrimonial ties or matrimonial alliances and even ethnic ties with the states of uh, up and as well as bihar so what is the thing i said that is some people of nepal they married indians and indians also married nepalis that mainly seen with this madhesi people of this nepal and if you are talking about strategic ties so as you all know here we have china here we have nepal and here we have india so in this way here nepal which mainly acts as a buffer state between this china and as well as india and several nepal citizens they also deployed in our indian defense forces also so this is about strategic ties between india and nepal 
So if you're talking about political ties, so actually in Nepal there was a constitutional turmoil which mainly happened. But it is also not new in Nepal. So at that time India which mainly played an important role in democratic transition in Nepal okay, against monarch. And even Nepali Congress which is a one of the country's oldest parties which mainly supports relationship with India here. But the communist party in Nepal they mainly tilted towards China. So this is about the political ties between India and Nepal. So if we are talking about economic ties. Yes, there is a good trade between India and Nepal and we can say that Nepal it is one of the import export market for India and Himalayan rivers also flowing across uh, this Nepal and India. So here what happened Nepal's economy which is mainly dependent upon this hydroelectric power. So in this hydroelectric power projects we are mainly going and buying this hydro power from this Nepal. And as well as we are also having some major deals with Nepal regarding this Kozi Agreement, Gandak Treaty and as well as Mahakali Treaty. It mainly talks about exports of power to Nepal. Okay. And Nepal it is one of the largest borrower of Indian currency in the South Asia as well. So in this way we are having good culture ties, strategic ties, economic ties okay, with the Nepal. So if we are talking about now in this meet. In this visit, so what are the key priority areas? So there are three important priority areas that we need to discuss. The first one is power trade agreement. So power trade agreement it is a one of the important priority area now. So if we want to increase the trust between India and Nepal, so we need to build trust in this power trade agreement. So actually you know that Nepal's economy which is mainly dependent on this hydroelectricity. So we are mainly purchasing this electricity from this Nepal here. And what happened during the summer also there will be increasing of peak demand of electricity in India. So we can go for buying of power from this Nepal. So in this way whenever we are going for buying of power from the Nepal it will be saves the billions of dollar investments. Because if you want to go for generation of this uh, this renewable energy through this hydro power means what happened that will leads to first of all we need to go for building of dams. So whenever we are going for building of dams it will need a lot of investment. So simply rather than going for buy, building of this, uh, this dams especially in ecologically unstable area like Himalayan areas. So we can go for buying of power from this Nepal such that we can also save some billions of dollars of investments. And the second area of concern here is trade and transit agreements. So we need to go for extension of this trade and transit agreements with Nepal. Okay, we need to rethink about sale of goods. We need to talk about the payment means through electronic platforms. So this will be very much helpful for the boost of business from the both the sides. And the third area of priority here is bilateral investment promotion and protection agreement. So it is mainly signed between India and Nepal. So we need to have a good attention from the Nepal side regarding this agreement. So these are the some important priority areas. So this is about India Nepal relations. So now let us try to see next topic it is regarding right to privacy. So actually this article is mainly talking about the criminal procedure identification bill 2022. So already we discussed this topic number of times again we are going to have a small discussion. So this article will be important regarding our GS paper to under polity. So this topic it is important from both prelims and as well as mains. So now let us try to understand this topic in a very great detail. So here central theme of this article says that this criminal procedure identification bill 2022. So this bill which mainly erodes the privacy of those who convicted of crime and even ordinary citizen. So this bill which is mainly going to erode the privacy. Now we are going to understand how this bill which is mainly going to erode this privacy. So if you are talking about this infographic. So I took directly from the Hindu. So it is not in the today's newspaper but I think three days ago's newspaper which mainly came up with this type of infographic and I simply downloaded it from the Hindu itself. So if you are talking about this infographic which is mainly talking about some key provisions of this bill. So this criminal procedure identification bill 2022 so which would allow police and as well as prison authorities now they can store they can analyze the physical and as well as biological sample that also includes retina and as well as iris scans of the convicts. So this bill which mainly going to repeal is identification of this prison's 
a prisoner's act of 1920 so whose scope was limited to recording the finger impressions and as well as foot impressions of limited category of uh, convicts so actually this prisoners act of 1920 so it is having a very very limited scope of recording this fingers prints and as well as foot prints but now we are going to repeal this prisoners act of 1920 and this bill which mainly expands the scope of uh, in Uh, measurements to include even iris uh, signature handwriting and as well as biological samples so under this new bill we are going to have some more important data from this iris and as well as the footprints fingerprints even signature of that so and so person and as well as even biological samples and and whatever the data that we are collecting those records can be stored for 75 years and it also proposes to record details of persons who detained under even preventive detention law as well right and if a person with no criminal background is released without trial or acquitted by a court all records of this measurements also can be also can be taken and they shall be destroyed okay so these are the some important provisions so what are the provisions i discussed they are present here so if we are talking about key provisions of this bill it is going to replace this prisoners act of 1920 right and here it authorizes prison authorities and as well as police personnel to mainly take measurements right so under this bill especially section 2 1 sub class b of this bill which mainly defines measurements so these measurements includes fingerprints foot prints palm prints and as well as photographs iris scan and as well as retina scan physical and biological samples and their analysis so all these data can be stored and this data which is mainly said under section 2 1 sub class b of this bill right and if you are talking about section 53 of this bill which may be related to the medical examination of this person who is arrested okay so this is about key provisions and if you are talking about storage of data so where we can store this data and how many years we can store this data and this bill authorizes that officers in charge of police stations and the people who are not below the head constable they had to take the measurements so measurements of these persons who are arrested will be taken by police or police officers in charge and as well as if you see constables they should not be less than head constable and those records or measurements they can be stored for 75 years from the date of collection and the present law which mainly covers officers in charge of stations those who conduct investigations or other not below the rank of sub inspector they can take the measurements but now here officers in charge and even head constable they can collect the measurements and who is the repository of this data that is national crime record bureau that is ncrb ncrb will be the repository of this physical and biological samples signature handwriting data and if you are talking about con- concerns regarding this bill so there are three important concerns the first one is there is lack of clarity so where we can see this lack of clarity so there are several provisions which are not defined in this bill itself okay and this bill which mainly says that we can go for collection of data like measurements for convicts and as well as other persons so who all will comes under this other persons which is not at all defined in this bill okay and this bill does not include accused of certain offenses but but it can be argued that the police could use this law to expand to others so there is nothing like so in which offenses exactly we can go for collection of data it is not given in this bill and there is conflict with the fundamental rights so opposition members they mainly argue that so this bill it is beyond this legislative competence of parliament and is also violate in the fundamental rights of citizen that is right to privacy as well so as you all know in this case put to swami judgment supreme court said right to privacy is a fundamental right which is mainly comes under article 21 of our indian constitution so whenever we are storing data it is also leads to right violation of right to privacy and this uh, bill which is mainly against article 20 sub class 3 which mainly talks about right against self incrimination and if you are talking about other concerns regarding this bill so this bill also brings to focus rights of prisoners and the right to be forgotten because this biometric data can be stored for 75 years here okay so because of this this right to be forgotten is also violated and next one is in putswami case here especially in the second case in 
सुप्रीम कोर्ट अप हेल्ड दिस आधार स्कीम एंड अलाउड द स्टेट टू कलेक्ट द फिंगरप्रिंट्स एंड एज वेल एस आई रिस स्कैन फॉर दिस वेलफेयर स्कीम्स बट इट डज नॉट टॉक अबाउट सिग्नेचर्स फिजिकल मेजरमेंट्स एक्सेट्रा एंड दिस बिल आल्सो वायलेट्स इज ह्यूमन राइट्स प्रोविजंस व्हिच आर मेड लेट बाय दिस यूनाइटेड नेशन चार्टर सो दीस आर द सम कंसर्न्स रिगार्डिंग दिस बिल सो एक्चुअली आई इफ ऑन स्क्रीन ऑन स्क्रीन यू कैन सी वन क्वेश्चन व्हिच इज अपीयर राइट so it is talking about uh, one previous question in 2018 in your prelims so right to privacy is protected under which or which article of the indian constitution so article 15 19 21 22 this is a very very simple question 2018 in prelims that is article 21 and now let's try to see next topic it is regarding old pension scheme and it to talk about national pension scheme so this article is important from your schemes and policies of government which mainly comes under your gs paper 2 so we are talking about this national pension scheme why it is in news so first let us try to see some important provisions of this national pension scheme so actually we came up with this national pension scheme in 2014 sorry in, in 2004 so before this 2004 we have old pension scheme okay we are going to talk about that as well so here national pension scheme it is government sponsored pension scheme so it mainly launched in 2004 for government employees actually this scheme which mainly extended to all citizens of india on voluntary basis from may 2009 and also it extended to corporates and is present for central government state government and corporates as well and it is not only applied for the citizens of india but even nris ocis they also eligible under this national pension scheme so which is a statutory authority that is pfrd it is a statutory authority which is mainly responsible for regulating promoting and ensuring orderly growth of this national pension scheme and this scheme which mainly provides the subscribers to contribute regularly in the pension account during their working life okay and after once they got retirement so these subscribers they can withdraw their amount their amount in a lump sum payment okay so after retirement they will be getting 8 lakhs to 10 lakhs rupees so so if your family your grandfather or your parents who are mainly working as government employees so after retirement they will be getting some lump sum amount of money right that mainly comes under this national pension scheme so who can join this national pension scheme so in all indians they will be eligible that is from 18 to 60 years and even Uh, even nrs they can join this and even ocs they can also join this right so this is about who can join this nps scheme so actually earlier we used to have this old pension scheme so this old pension scheme which mainly ensures a life long income and as well as post retirement so after post retirement every month they will be getting some income right so this will be mainly used for their medical exp- ex- uh, medical expenses or to run their family so this will be very useful they are not going to get lump sum amount of money at a time but after once retirement is done so they will be getting life long income so the assured amount which is equivalent to 50 percentage of the last drawn salary so how much amount they will be getting as a life long income every month means for example let us take at last month of retirement he used to collect 20000 rupees means after retirement he will be getting 50% that is about 10000 rupees okay actually this scheme which mainly discontinued in 2003 under this uh, atal bihari vajpayee government and later on we came up with this national pension scheme okay so this scheme which is now applicable to all central government uh, services except this armed forces okay so it is not applicable for this armor forces so actually there was one prelims question which appeared in our earlier uh, upsc so here the question here is uh, who among the following can join this national pension scheme indian residents only not only in indian residents i said that it is nrs and even ocs are also eligible and person who are aged from 21 to 50 not 50 mainly up to 60 years and all state government employees joining the services after the date of notification by the respective state government so let us keep this statement on hold and let us see the next statement so all central government employees including those who are armed forces so this uh, this nps will not be applicable to this armed forces so that option will be c right so in this way you can read the statements and you can go for elimination method if you don't know the answer 
So next article it is regarding US deputy NSA warns India of consequences. So actually what happened India which is mainly planning to get arms and to get oil from this Russia right. So what happened already US which mainly imposed the sanctions on Russia. So under this cards so whenever any country which is mainly going for the deal with the countries on which US already imposed sanctions means under this card so here US will also impose sanctions on the countries which they are going for the deal with those countries. So here US deputy also says that yes India need to go for facing of consequences if it is going for trade with Russia. So this article is important from your GS paper to under international relations. So here you need to know about what is this card so let me know in the comment box. And now let us try to see context why it is in news. So if you see this article it mainly says that there will be consequences for any country including India that mainly conducts local currency transactions through Russia's central bank. Actually you know that Russia which is mainly, uh, mainly it is, it is mainly banned from the SWIFT, right SWIFT. So because of this if any country which mainly go, want to go for trade means they have to go for trade which is other than SWIFT. So here India it is mainly thinking about this, this, uh, uh, chi this Chinese currency, Chinese currency payment or we can say like ruble payment or we are talking about India, uh, Indian rupee and ruble payment. So here in this way here US which mainly wants that if we are going for the trade, uh, trade with the local currency transaction with the Russia then we can also come under this purview of sanctions. So this is the thing which mainly said by US. So if we are talking about some important details it mainly says that our external affairs minister he mainly said that so we are going to talk about this peace talks and we are going to talk about this different supplies okay and they are also talking about this alternate payment mechanism in the face of western sanctions so in this context your administration said that yes we are with you so if you want to make the good relationship with russia in uh, russia in relation to the china so we are the we are also always stand with you regarding this lac that is line of actual control issue so this is the thing which mainly said by us and also here here this us which is also very much interested here because if the local currency transaction which mainly started with with russia with other countries means that will undermine this dollar based financial system so it is one cause of concern for america and if you're talking about background actually this week the bank uh, banks officials of russia and the country central bank they mainly met okay and they mainly discussed about alternate payment mechanisms and they want to route through the bank here okay so because of this here there is a one warning signal that we saw from this us so now let us try to see next topic it is regarding AFSPA. so area under areas under this AFSPA regime reduced so this is a thing which mainly said by our union home minister so this article is important from your GS paper 3 under internal security. So here you need to know about what is this AFSPA as well. So if we are talking about context it mainly says that Union Home Ministry which mainly considerably reduces this disturbed areas under this Armored Forces Special Power Act in Assam, Manipur and Nagaland. So our Home Minister who mainly announced. So our Home Minister announced that there is reducing of this disturbed area status in in areas in Assam and as well as uh, Manipur and as well as Nagaland. So if you see some important details it mainly says that so reduction in the areas under this AFSPA is result of improved security situation and as well as fast track development in these areas. So actually in yesterday's or day before yesterday's lecture we studied about Assam Meghalaya agreement. So because of this agreement between these northeastern states then what happened that will lead to the decreasing of conflict and that will also reduce the number of areas which mainly comes in this disturbed areas. So because of this after this agreement once done there was some agreement between the six disputed areas between Assam and as well as Meghalaya. So because of this reduction of uh, some, some threats in these areas so AFSPA which is also improved its security situation and it is mainly going for this fast track development and several agreements finally that will help for ending of insurgency in this northeastern states. Okay, so now let us try to understand some facts regarding this AFSPA. So a reincarnation, this is nothing but reincarnation of British era legislation that was enacted to quell the protests 
during the Sukhvit India movement. Okay, actually this ordinance is mainly replaced by an act in 1948. Okay, and this uh, present law which is mainly effective in North Eastern states which mainly introduced in parliament in 1958. So it was also known initially as Armed Forces that is Assam and Manipur Special Parts Act of 1958. So after this which act which mainly passed here so, so the number of states like Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland they mainly came into being here. Okay and let us try to see next topic. It is regarding core sector output rises 5 percentage, 5.8 percentage. So this article will be important regarding economy which mainly comes under your GS paper 3. So if you are talking about context it mainly says that India's core sector output which mainly grew at a faster pace in 4 months at 5.8 percentage in February. So in February there is increasing of this core sector output. Okay, and not only this, even crude oil fertilizers, which mainly comes under this crude uh, from this core sector, they felt okay. Some sectors they mainly felt, and some sectors they mainly seen the rise. So, if you're talking about those eight core sectors, you have to remember this mnemonic funds 3C fertilizer, electricity, refineries, natural gas, steel, coal, crude oil, and cement. So, if you're talking about these eight core sectors, they mainly comprise about 40.27 percentage okay of weight in the items of this index of industrial production so eight core sectors decreasing order here is first one is refinery second one is electricity third one is steel fourth one is coal fifth one is crude oil sixth one is gas natural gas seventh one is cement and last one is fertilizers so here we need to know about some facts regarding this index of industrial production so index of this industrial production which is an indicator and this mainly measures the changes in the volume of production of industrial products. So actually this uh, index which mainly published by published either monthly or monthly by this CSO Central Statistical Organization. Here this CSO which mainly comes from this MOSP Minister or Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. So it mainly includes some broad sectors like mining, uh, manufacturing and as well as electricity. So we can also see some sectors like uh, basic goods and as, well as capital goods and as, well as intermediate goods. So we are talking about base year that is 2011 to 2012. So now let us try to see yesterday's questions. The first one is regarding IVC. In this valley civilization refers to large number of cities, towns, villages which flourished in this third millennium BC. So which of the following statements are right? So Mohenjo-daro first revealed this existence of this Indus Valley Civilization. It is not Mohenjo-daro, it is Harappa. So because of this, it is called as Harappan Civilization. So this statement is incorrect. And Harappa it is the largest site. So Harappa is not the largest site, but it is Mohenjo-daro. So correct answer is neither one nor two. And next question is regarding black and red wear culture. So it is regarding pottery. So the characteristic feature of the pottery in, in of this culture here is black color inside and near the rim and outside and red color over the rest of the body yes this statement is absolutely correct so because of this it is called as black and red wear and next one is black and red wear pottery was made of fine clay and was mostly wheel turned yes this statement is also correct so that option will be both one and two and today's questions are the first one is regarding harappan culture second one it is regarding early vedic society so try to read the statements and give me the correct options in the comment box. So before seeing this today's Hindu newspaper PDF, I want to make a small announcement on this platform. So here we in Rathor size, we are coming up with mains answer rating practice course of one year. Okay, and here we are providing you weekly targets. We are providing you daily one question based on that targets. On Sundays, there will be essay or case study practice. There will be evaluation, there will be one to one mentorship and also we will be giving you modal answer for that question. And this course is exclusively beneficial to improve your mains answer writing skills. Without proper answer writing skills, you cannot clear UPSC for sure. I can write a bond also, right? So here to improve this mains answer writing skills, you have to join this course. And the details of this course, which is given in description box. So actually there is small problem in our website we are not getting OTP so there is some issue which is going on. So because of this actually we thought to launch this program on April 4th 
and we are we are mainly postponing this april 4th to april 10th so from april 10th onwards this course which is going to be started and the registrations will be opened uh, opened in the first week of april okay so if you want to join this course you can join this course and if you have any queries you can call me on this number the number here is 8074765513 okay apart from this we are also going to launch this pen drive courses for entire foundation course of 2023 so this will be absolutely beneficial we are focusing on conceptual clarity and each and every topic which is mainly discussed in the classes and i can ensure you that so after watching all this video there will be no doubt in your mind regarding that so and so subject so you can join those courses also they are also very very affordable so if you want to watch the demo videos you can visit our website there you can watch the three demo videos which is a free of cost and now let us try to see today's hindu analysis uh, pdf so actually this is the hindu pdf so here the date here is april 1st 2022 and this is delhi edition so actually i discussed this first article regarding this india us and i discussed about this aspa and here you have to know about this one year quota okay supreme court which mainly strikes down this tamil nadu one year quota so you have to know about who are this one years and what is the issue and if you see in the city paper i saw there is a heat wave to continue okay so you have to know what is a heat wave and what are the important uh, features of this heat wave that will come to your geography right and if you move further if you move further in the states page you can see dam safety act can end disputes so here you need to focus on some important facts regarding this dam safety act and next one is dip in chilika's lakes dolphin population so this article says a dolphin population along this odisha coast had been increased but especially there is the state uh, state's dolphin population that is irrawaddy dolphin in this uh, chilika lake which had been declined so this is one cause of concern and if you're talking about six species of dolphins that is irrawaddy dolphin and bottle nose humpback stripper finless and spinner dolphins they have been recorded in this odisha coast and if you go forward in this editorial page i discussed about this privacy issue i discussed regarding india nepal ties so actually this article which is mainly talking about bemstick so already we discussed number of times regarding this bemstick you can go for revision of this topic and next one it is regarding assam meghalaya border issue border agreement i already discussed that topic in our earlier lectures and next one it is regarding fuel pricing policy problematic or not so because of this ukraine crisis russia ukraine crisis that led to increasing of this fuel price so this is the thing which is mainly given in this article and if you see this text and context i i discussed uh, this article regarding this old pension scheme so you can see this topic that is uh, regarding rubble rise of rubble amid this ukraine crisis so what happened rubble which is a currency of uh, russia so actually in earlier uh, classes we studied about the value of this russian rubble which mainly decreased against the dollar but now this article says that so rubble has recorded almost all the losses it mainly incurred okay and this russian central bank was able to achieve achieve this success which is mainly because of some capital controls and as well as because of increasing the demand of uh, rubles and even reduce the demand for the dollars etc and this rubble which is mainly recovering now in russia okay the russian economy is still poorer because of uh, exit of this foreign businesses and even by caught by the west from the swift etc and this is not much important and if you move towards this pages there are nothing much important article but in the 14 page you can see india prepared for the climate refugees so because of this climate change also there is increasing of sea levels that is mainly seen in some areas there is extreme rainfall in some areas there is no rainfall we can see some drought like situations so the people from that area will, will be coming under this uh, climate refugees so our government of india which mainly said that we are very much well prepared for this climate refugees right and if you see in the world page you can see pakistan's hail uh, china hails pakistan military as mainstay of bilateral ties here so it is about china pakistan relations and there is one more article that is china pakistan afghanistan's agree to boost three way ties so this is also very very important and i discussed about this core sector issue and this article says that there is a trade gap which mainly widens 
so india's current account deficit which is mainly increasing so you need to know what is this current account deficit this is your homework and there is one more article which is mainly talking about fiscal deficit so fiscal deficit which mainly reached reached 8.82.7 percent each so you need to understand what is this fiscal deficit so this is your homework so let me know what is this fiscal deficit and as well as current account deficit in the comment box so these are the some important articles that appear in this today's newspaper so i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathor's is academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos and if you want to get the pdf of this lecture so you can join the telegram channel link is given in description box thank you so much